Welcome back to the Departure Brief. Today I stand on Angkor Wat, the largest religious monument in the entire world. I'm armed with a three day pass and in this three days I plan on uncovering as much of the site as possible showing you what you can see on your own journey. Behind me is Angkor Wat, built in the 12th century. It is an absolute testament to Khmer architecture, initially built as a Hindu temple in the name of Lord Vishnu. Now, today, it operates as a Buddhist monument. It is absolutely incredible and something you must check out when you visit Cambodia. During sunrise, Angkor Wat's central tower aligns perfectly with the sun and reflects absolutely beautifully on the water in front, creating an awe-inspiring spectacle. This alignment with the sun and the central tower symbolizes the important connection between the sky and the earth. It is absolutely beautiful to see in the morning. If you plan on seeing the sunrise over Angkor Wat and you want a good spot, I highly recommend that you leave your Ecom, make sure your tuk-tuk driver or whoever is taking you picks you up no later than 4.30. Get here, get in line by 5 a.m. and then walk straight to one of the reflection ponds. Find a good spot and be prepared to wait up to an hour for the sun to come up. So the key to exploring Angkor Wat and having a nice leisurely experience is timing. Timing is everything. On sunrise day, you wanna be getting here early. You don't wanna be rocking up any time after 5 a.m. Get to the site early, find your sunrise spot and be patient. Wait for the sky to clear and the sun to come up and you'll get absolutely incredible views and amazing pictures. And then while everybody is watching the remnants of the sunrise, that is your cue to take off and go explore the actual temple complex itself before all the crowds follow. Another pro tip is seeing the sunset at Angkor Wat. The temple complex shuts at 5.30. There is a window between 5 and 5.30 where you can enter the site without having your ticket stamped for a day. So that kind of gives you a little bonus. I did that yesterday and I was literally the only one walking into the temple complex while hundreds were going the other way and I was actually the last one out. At four o'clock, make your way to the ticket counters, buy your ticket, there won't be a big line, and then head straight to Angkor Wat and take in the sunset. Oh boy, that was absolutely incredible. A place I've always wanted to go and now I can say that I'm very thankful that I've been. It is exactly as it's described, absolutely amazing. An incredible feat of architecture. Well done Cambodians. On to stop number two. I'm just walking through the entrance to Temple Bante G'day, which name actually translates to Citadel of Chambers, reflecting the maze-like corridors within. Back in its prime, it used to be the home of many monks serving as a monastery. Let's go explore it. The temples of Angkor Wat are famous for many things, one being how nature seems to be, over time, reclaiming the land for itself, and we're seeing the first evidence of that here. Look, I've been travelling now for over five months, so I've seen my fair share of temples, and I'm a bit bored of them, but this is otherworldly. This is not your average temple hopping experience this is magical everybody needs to do this if they want to travel in southeast asia so while we've got a moment of quiet ambience on our way to our next stop a quick word on budgeting for angkor wat it is not cheap i almost got caught out by it so you can get a one day pass a three day pass or a seven day pass i'll put the prices for you here 
that's just one element of the cost. There is absolutely no chance that you can walk from temple to temple here. So the hidden expense is paying for a tuk-tuk driver to drive you around, hiring a scooter or hiring a bicycle. I think the best way to approach budgeting is you've got to balance budget with enjoyment. Obviously a bicycle is gonna be cheaper than hiring a tuk-tuk driver, but I think this is one of those places where you can splash a little bit of cash to make sure you're getting the most out of your experience. The best way to go about it is to do your research on the temples, map out an itinerary, must-see temples, and work out how many days you wanna be exploring for. I've gone for three days, that's meeting in the middle. And then you want to find a tuk-tuk driver that you like, and that you can get a fair price from. That's gonna look different to every driver, although they're roughly same, same. My advice would be not to haggle down to the absolute lowest dollar that you can, because you want an enjoyable experience, especially if you're going to be doing a three-day package or a seven-day package. You want a driver that you can get along with that isn't grumpy because he's earning peanuts. Don't be stingy, pay a little bit more than the bottom price and you'll have a great time. And a good way to manage the cost is to find someone to share it with. So most tuk-tuks can take up to three passengers, sometimes four. So your tuk-tuk fees, you could split that among three people or four people. I haven't done that because I wanted to experience the temples how I wanted to experience them. I didn't want to be going with the group feeling. I wanted to be able to be like, yep, I want to go here. Yep, time to leave, take me home blah 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 i think that's the only way or the best way to manage costs for angkor wat if you've been here before and you've got a better idea i'd love to hear it in the comments so that we could share budget tips with other travelers to help angkor wat become more accessible to more people i've just crossed the fence into tuprom temple infamous made famous by lara croft in tomb raider Remember what I was saying about nature slowly taking back? Well, this side here is infamous for it. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> this route has caused so much carnage, it needs to be maintained. <laughs> wow. Nature always finds a way. The next stop is the mighty Takao Temple. First glimpse and it is a monolith. It is huge, like a pyramid. Takao is a massive temple mountain built in the 10th century, so two centuries before Angkor Wat. It's gonna be sweaty work getting to the top. Then we go up. This is the before. Okay, those stairs are nothing. Look at this shit. Let's do it. It's literally a rock scrap. Oh my Jesus. Another, another unique stop. This one is completely different to the other three. It's pyramid structure. And if you climb to the top, it'll make you weak in the legs. Look at this. This is what we've got to contend with on the way down. Just pretty much a straight drop. And then onto the next one. <laughs> Why did I come up here? Made it. Legs are wobbling, but we made it. This is the after. Whew. <laughs> All right, on to stop number five. Who knows what we're gonna see?
Behind me is the final stop for day one, Bayan Temple, famous for its iconic stone faces. Is it she an impressive sight? It is massive. And again, another totally unique temple. This temple hopping experience so far has been so amazing. Obviously it's amazing because it's Angkor Wat, but it's not boring because every temple is like very different so far. Apparently there's 54 pillars with 54 faces on them. Let's go see if we can spot them all. That concludes an epic day one. Time to go home and recharge the batteries, literally, and clear the SD cards. I can't wait for day two. See you then.